everyone. This is Three Questions with Marita Diffenbach. Hey, Marita, it's awesome to talk to you. And if for people who don't know, Marita actually has a book called Learn, or you can see it in my hand if you're watching on YouTube. If you are listening, uh, then you can't see it. So too bad for you. You should be watching it on YouTube. And it's called Learner, Finding the True, Good, and Beautiful in Education. And uh, we're going to talk more about the book in our longer podcast. But uh, Marita, it has been awesome to connect with you, to talk to you. I know that you wrote the book with uh, um, Jimmy Cassis and Jeff Zoll's publishing company. Is that correct? Connected Ed? Right. And connected books. Yeah. And Jimmy and Jeff are pretty good friends of mine. So uh, it's, it's good to see, you know, awesome people connect with one another. And I know that you're in Idaho and I was just at this conference with you and, you know, honestly, like a lot of people look up to you there. I don't know if you know that, right? Like you're kind of a big deal there in Idaho. <laughs> no, well, you're not going to say anything. You, George. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I am, it's an honor to be here. I, I, I've, I've been in, uh, working in Idaho for 22 years in education yeah. and I'm on Twitter and social media a lot. I think you can, you can uh, get well known pretty easy when not a lot of people are on yeah. social media. Yeah, so yeah. No, then it, you end up being the, yeah. And they were talking pretty people. positively about you. And so I was, I was really excited to be able to just chat with you, kind of hear some of your experiences. And so like, I know that a lot of people look up to you. A lot of people appreciate all the work that you actually do. And we'll get more into that uh, in the other podcast. But I want to know, like, when you look back at your, your education career, when you look back at, you know, your own schooling, like who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Ah, Miss Williams. She was my sixth grade teacher. And although my parents didn't really appreciate Miss Williams as much as I did because she was doing things a little different, we had a lot of choice in school. And so I remember her classroom being filled with opportunities. You could go from place to place and choose where you wanted to spend your time. And uh, gosh, we had boa constrictors for pets and you could hold the boa constrictors. I remember that. You could sit on the floor if you wanted to you, and uh, you could just move about how you wanted to. But ultimately, Miss Williams studied me. Mm -hmm. She figured out who is Marita and how does she best learn? And she realized that I had a passion for telling stories. And so she encouraged me in creative writing and I would actually get extra time for creative writing um, if I did just some minimum things in math. And that's maybe part of the part that my parents didn't really appreciate, but she ultimately let me choose uh, to spend more time in the things that brought me joy and less time in the things that I struggled in. But I always continue to grow even in the things I struggled in. So, so what was yeah, her? Miss what was, Williams. She's Ms. a rock star. Miss Williams, you said, right? Is, is Miss Williams, do you ever talk to Miss Williams yes. still? I have not been able to get a hold of her. I have been trying. She, I have looked all over social media, so I, I don't know. I, I would love to find her someday. Well, Miss Williams, if she, you find she, oh, she had a green Vokes. So, if Miss Williams, if you are listening to this podcast, just want to give you a little shout out. So you got the little shout out button, but like pretty cool that you're talking about a teacher that inspired you to write, and then you got this book. Like, how cool is that, right? Like. Just to think, you know, probably some of the roots of that book were actually, you know, in that grade six class, right? To kind of get you and empower your voice and uh, really powerful story. I love that. So the next question, you know, and I know that there's a lot of great administrators uh, in the Idaho area. I know that you are, yourself are a leader. So when you look back at some of the people that maybe inspired you as an administrator, some of the people that had a, had a tremendous impact on you, Who's an administrator that you look back and could be, you know, when you're a student, could be when you were, you know, teaching that inspired you. What did they do and, and, and why do you why do you give them shout out? Uh, I just I shout out for Dr. Heather Williams. I did my EDS program with her at Boise State University. And something that I noticed that sh that she did was focus on the human first. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be refreshing and really different in a higher ed kind of a educational experience, at least in my experience where we were able to do kind of life maps and think about what actually got us to where we were today. So mm. who were, who are we basically as a leader? And we had, we had time set aside to study our own self so that we understood 
our strengths, our weaknesses, because ultimately when you become an administrator, your number one job is to build a team and to understand everyone on your team and how everyone can, can play a part. And so you also have to understand who you are as mm -hmm. a leader and what part you're playing as well. And I think that that um, her work is incredible. She she coaches up um, up and coming superintendents in the state of Idaho mm. and has an exceptional program there. You know, so one of my I know this is like I don't know I don't know how connected this is, but one of the my favorite coaches of all time is Phil Jackson, and Phil Jackson coached the the Michael Jordan Bulls. He won six championships with them. He coached the Lakers, won five championships. He's won the most championships of any coach in the NBA ever. And I know that people don't necessarily love when I talk about sports, but I think that the reason that there's so many connections to what you just said, to what Phil Jackson did. And so, yeah, you got your Michael Jordans and you got your, you know, Shaqs and Kobe Bryant's like some of the best players ever. But one of the things that Phil Jackson really talked about is basically ensuring that every person on that team that, you know, and only one of them was Michael Jordan actually found what they were good at, what they contributed to that team. So they all felt like they were, um, I don't know. I don't know if they would say like they were equal contributors to the success of the team, but they, like they all contributed their gifts equally. If that, if that makes sense. I don't, I don't know if maybe if that's, I'm not being very clear on the distinction that, you know, if you didn't get to play, you know, in the game, right. And it's professional, you know, people are not going to play. Your job was to like push the players on that team as hard as possible in practice so that when they got in a game. And so like basically every person had a, a unique role. And even one of the things that he did, I did as an administrator, uh, he didn't just give everyone like, Hey team, we're going to read this book. He would actually find books specifically for different members of his team that he thought would actually benefit them. So you have to really know people uh, in, in a really powerful way. And so, so, and again, I'm, I apologize. What was the name of your administrator that you know is currently training superintendents? Uh, her, uh, her name is Dr. Heather Williams. Dr. Heather and, Williams. Um, Dr. Williams is Dr. Heather Williams. And Dr. Heather yeah, Williams. And um, to your point. Sorry, go ahead. There's, I think there's a little bit of a delay. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, ultimately, yes, George, exactly what you were saying, just helping people see their value as an individual mm -hmm. and how they can contribute back to a team. And that is something that um, Dr. Heather Williams is a gift, uh, has a gift of doing. And I hope to pass that on. Dr. Heather Williams, shout out. Love it. All right, Marita, last question. This is the, this is a big one. So, uh, we are having a really great conversation before the podcast. One of my favorite things about doing this podcast is the stuff that we do kind of off wax. And I know that you are an incredible learner. In fact, so much so that you wrote a book called learner, right? So, which is awesome. Uh, so you, I'm sure there's things that you maybe look back on, you know, early on in your career that you cringe at. You're like, I can't believe I used to do that, right? And you, like, I think we all do. It's, like, I know for sure there's things that I'm like, oh, like I'm so sorry, first year class that had me, right? Just kind of thinking about that. So when you look back on your mm -hmm. career, when you look back at, you know, the beginning especially, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? Ah, be yourself is what I would give my first year teacher self uh, the advice. And it's, it's probably because, you know, when I came into education, I had an idea of what the role of a teacher was. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was, I felt sometimes like I was acting a part out. If I look back, I really was acting the role of a teacher. Um, so much so that I had a mentor teacher who told me, Hey, Marita, like, you've got teacher voice big time. So, so ha, ha, you got to stop. You got to stop doing the teacher voice for the kids. I'm like, what? I, and my heart was broken because I thought I was just working so hard right. to reach the kids. But she's like, you just need to have a conversation with them. Here, here's a stool. Sit down on the stool and just talk and just relate and like be normal <laughs> about yourself. Like just, just Re relate in an authentic way. And that was really good advice. I wish I would have been able to do that from the get go. And even during student teaching and things like that, I think it would have caused me less anxiety to ha give myself permission to be myself. You know, okay, so this is this might be a little bit of a weird story. Um, I was remember is probably my second or third year, second or third year of teaching. And I was also coaching basketball. And I remember we were, kids were playing basketball in at the gym and I was like supervising. And one of the kids on my team was, was playing around 
and I was talking to one of the other coaches and I was like, you know, joking around with her, you know, you know, given, we were kind of like giving each other a hard time, kind of joking back and forth. And it was just, you know, it was like a fun, we had a great friendship and things like that. And one of that kid, I will never forget this. He goes, you treat everybody the same, like whether we're a kid, whether it's a principal superintendent, you just act the same to everybody. I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? And right. And it's like, like I used it because he would see that I would do the same thing to, you know, uh, the players on my team. I would do it to students in my classroom and joke around. And that's one thing that I, you know, we, I've had this conversation with a couple of people talking about teacher voice and kind of sometimes, you know, like I think sometimes when I work with speakers, uh, I tell them like, be yourself on, don't, don't go into this like fake persona because people read through that right away. And it's one thing that I, you know, I, I, I might not have been the best with pedagogy, but I, that was, that to me, when he said that, I thought about it. I'm like, that's like, I felt like that was such a good compliment to me early in my career is that, yeah, I don't, I, I don't pretend I know everything. I, I got a lot of learning to go, but I do, you know, try to treat everyone with respect, joke around, you know, try to make everyone feel appreciated, which is something I really learned from my mom and dad uh, and the ways they interacted with people coming into the restaurant. So I, I absolutely love that advice and uh, made me reflect on, you know, early stage of my career and um, something that I think I was good at at the time because I don't think there was much when I first started, but maybe that was my, my one saving grace. So Marita, thank you so much. Uh, for being on the podcast. And again, uh, check out the book Learner. We're going to talk more about it and you can check out a future podcast with Marita. But thank you so much and thanks to everyone listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye, everybody.